Hello again, I'm Cleo and this is a story from West Greece. There is a, a river in the west of the country and across that river there's a huge stone bridge. They say that no one ever fell from that bridge. They say that it never shakes, shakes nor does it ever tremble. And it is an admirable work of craftsmanship. And no wonder. Legend says that it was 60 masons and 45 apprentices that worked day after day to finish it, tirelessly, with the best tools they had in their disposal. But as far as, as, as hard as they were working during the day, they would go home to rest for the night and they would come the day after to find the bridge in ruins and they had to start again. Day after day they were building and night after night it was being dismantled until they stopped and furious and despaired they started crying and lamenting their toil and their trouble. Who could have cursed this work, who could have cursed this project was lamenting the, the chief of the construction. And as everyone was waiting for him to come up with a solution, a little bird flew across the river and it stopped and it spoke with a human voice. And he said, Masons, do not work tireless, tirelessly and do not waste your toil. None of this is going to come to any end unless you build a human soil, soul inside the bridge and you should not sacrifice a wandering man or someone you don't know or someone who just happened to pass by but rather you should sacrifice the young and pretty wife of the archmason her who comes every morning and brings him breakfast her who comes every night and takes him home The Archmason lost a heartbeat. But there was nothing he could do. So with the same bird, he tried to send a message to his wife. His message said, take your time if you want to come tonight. And don't make any haste when you prepare dinner. And don't get very pretty. You don't really have to put any effort and if you cannot come at all then that's okay and the little bird flew away but changed the message and when he reached the young woman he told her he says make haste and very very quickly get dressed and don't bother making dinner just wear your pretty clothes and go find him like now and so she did because he didn't often ask for her when he was at work. So up she jumped and she got dressed and she ran to find him in the bridge. And as she arrived, she greeted everyone from afar and everyone was waiting for her like they've never waited before. But he, the archmason, his face was dour and his eyes were downcast. She didn't address him, but she spoke to everyone else and she said, guys, what's wrong with your archmason? He's not usually this unhappy to see me. Oh, my lady, said one of the apprentices. He's sad because as we were working today, he lost his wedding ring there down below by the river. And, you know, the day's drawing to a close and no one wants to go down there and pick it up for him. So, you know, his mood is foul. This is not something to worry my husband with, she said. If someone ties me, you can lower me and I can go and look for the ring and I'll bring it back. And that would cheer him up, wouldn't it? Sure, said everyone. And so the apprentice tied a chain around her waist and they gave her something to hold on to as they were lowering her down by the river and further down and down and down. Near the biggest of the arches, just above the water, and the night was drawing near. And she was being lowered and she heard the waters al almost under her feet. And she looked around and she was seeing no ring. Only the ruins of many 
many days of work. So she started pulling at the chain. Guys, can you someone pull me up? I see nothing. There's no ring. There's nothing here. All, all I can see is debris and stone and water. Please pull me up. And as she turned to look up and see if they were listening to her, she saw them. One of them was preparing mortar. One of them was stacking bricks. And she saw her dear husband picking up the largest of the stones. And she knew that she was being built in the bridge as a sacrifice. And then she raised her voice saying, we must be a family of cursed women. Three sisters we were. The first one was built in Danube. The second built a bridge in Euphrates. And I, I am here in this God-forsaken place in the west of Greece being built alive. But now this is my curse. I curse this bridge to tremble like the leaves in in the in the breeze and I curse everyone who crosses that bridge to fall like the same leaves in autumn. The same apprentice who was holding her chain heard this in horror and urged her, my lady, change her curse and remember you have a brother. He is away, he is in Europe, and he might come back some day. What if he comes back and dies because of your curse? There was nothing else in the world that would make her change her words at that point. But this reminder, for the love of the one brother that was left to her, she changed her words and said, Then may every wanderer who crosses it fall only if the eagles of the mountains fall. And so the bridge still stands in the west of Greece. Five arches it has. It has never crumbled. It has never fallen. And none of the people who ever crossed it ever missed a step. <laughs>